When I first started racing, rightly or wrongly, I had the feeling that I could be world class. I remember our first proper mountain bike race, so she was last at 13 minutes behind the last rider. <laughs> Before we really knew what was happening, I was funding trips to Europe to race in the World Series. I was always keen on mountain biking myself, cycle touring and camping. When she was about maybe two and a half years old, uh, I built a small frame out of copper tube for Isla to sit on the back of my tandem and she's never that keen. So I bribe her with hot chocolate and cake. Well, actually, my mum once paid me five pounds to ride the Blue Trail at Glentress. <laughs> and that is so crazy now. I'm so grateful that my parents did that for me because they've opened up this whole world. It was about 14, I think. She said that she wanted to leave music school to become a professional cyclist. I was at a specialist music school. <laughs> That was really full on, like a really intense environment, like competing with your friends to get selected for concerts and stuff. My life at the music school and stuff had become a, like a little bit mundane at the same time that I was kind of growing up and realizing like what I wanted in life. And that was being outside, being with nature. Everything changed from that point. She very rapidly shot through the sort of youth ranks. Went to the top at a junior level very quickly. My first ever World Cup, I was fifth. I was just like blissfully unaware of the work that I was putting in, I guess. Because it didn't feel like work for me, because I was just like having fun riding my bike. <laughs> so that kind of gave me this feeling that I could, that I would just continue to be at the top. Her sort of trajectory was interrupted with a serious car accident, and that took six months uh, to come back from that. Not really expecting her to come back to any kind of level, because it was very difficult psychologically. She was always nervous about her injuring herself again. Riding to Glentress to meet my dad and I was crossing a 60 mile an hour road and I was hit by a car side on. Fractured my spine in two places and broke my collarbone. It changed a lot of things in terms of my outlook on life. Realising that I'm not invincible and realising how quickly something can happen. Mm. But it also made me realise, yeah, I want to be a bike rider. This is what I want to do, this is what I love. And I think my life is definitely um, divided into before and after that and I don't look back to before the accident and think oh things were better then like my life is better because of that accident I had all this stuff happen that kind of got in the way to me and it really affected me from progressing as a bike rider I basically spent four years trying to be the rider that I thought that I was already and that I really struggled with that because I just was disappointed after every race because I felt like this isn't this isn't the rider I can be, this isn't where I was as a junior. Um, and that was like really naive. I wasn't really prepared for it to be that hard. My first season in Elite was exhausting. Had my first Elite World Cup, I had like no expectations. Because I, I kind of accepted the fact that I wasn't where I wanted to be with my racing. And then I went and got 22nd and that was amazing so I kind of knew on my best day I could be a top 25 rider but I didn't think that would happen right away and then I went straight to the next World Cup and then suddenly that race was everything I dreamed of for the last four years. I was 15th and that was so unexpected. Basically spent the whole middle part of the season thinking it was a fluke took me until the second last World Cup for me to like kind of repeat a performance that I was really proud of and that was when I got 14th in Lenzerheide and like the difference between those races is that I looked back on Nova Mesto and I had no idea how I did that result but then in Lenzerheide I looked back on it and I was like okay I know what I did to do that and that's the difference. I've just been thinking about the wrong things in races 
it's so backwards thinking but the more you think about the result and the outcome the less likely it's going to happen. I had learned that really hard way. I feel like now I know how to be a little bit more like level-headed with it all and not get carried away by the amazing days or the bad days. What is your <laughs> objective for the weekend? To suss it out for future victory. <laughs> um, this race is different because it's four hours long instead of an hour and a half long and it's 70 kilometers. It's got like loads of climbing, 3000 meters. For an event like this, it's quite nice to just have a small group of people. Me, myself and I, and my mechanic, you and Cameron. I've been in quite a lot of different environments for races. Cause I've been on professional teams for four years and it's taken me quite a long time to learn what makes me tick, what can make me bring out the best performance I can. 100% it's it's the people that I'm around. <laughs> Short factory racing is, well, it's kind of a joke, but at the same time, it means a lot to me. It's just her and I um, going to races and provide, me providing the backup, I like doing the racing. And... The kind of lifestyle that I want doesn't really fit with a professional team at the moment. For that whole period of time where we did that, just me and my dad, before I got noticed by teams or anything, I don't remember anxiety, I don't remember being stressed about races, I don't remember beating myself up when things didn't go well and that's the best psychological space for me because that's my ultimate, ultimate goal is to be in that headspace again. You don't have to accept that you just have to join a normal team and then put up with everything that comes with that, the good and the bad. This weekend's kind of fun because I only decided to do it halfway through the season. But I'm doing it because I want to win it in the future and it's coming to Scotland in four years. So I've got big goals. I need to start somewhere. So this weekend I'm just about seeing what the pace is like, what the tracks are like, and just generally getting a feel for how I race a 70k mountain bike race. It's not like my season goal. I've not really trained for this. It's always been like a side goal of mine. I was always like, I'll do it later. And then I was like, no, fuck it. I want to do it now. I really, really love this stuff. This is why I ride a bike. I think sometimes people lose perspective on why they race and what their goals are. Because I feel like, and even for me a little bit, it stopped being about what's going to make me race my bike the fastest. And it started being about, oh, this team's got this many followers on Instagram and that would give me so much exposure and oh, they, there's this rider on the team and they're really good and it would look really cool if I was hanging out with them. And Ultimately, they're trying to sell a product. You don't get a choice in the tires that you run or the frames that you ride or nutrition products and yet you're still obliged to promote all this stuff like it's the best thing in the world. And I really struggle with that because I want to be able to express myself openly and honestly. Doing it independently this year, one of the big things for me, for me was being able to ride equipment that I genuinely loved and trusted. I wanted my racing to be about the bike race and I wanted to share the love of things that I actually love. Eyes not short. On the final climb, which was an hour long, I went from 6th to 21st. I lost like 15 places at least from the last week. I felt like I wasn't going to make it home. The last 10k, like every time I went around a corner, I was just like... It was like, it was so good for like three hours, I felt amazing. At the finish line, I, was, I didn't even mind what had happened. I 
I said before the race, I might be fifth, I might be fourth, I have no idea. I might be fifth, I might be fifth, we have to do either. So when I found out I was riding in seventh with the sixth place rider, I was like, don't think about it, don't think about it right now. Well, I learned a lot from that experience. I probably love training more than I love racing. I moved to school to come here because of the, tra the trails and the riding. I am totally biased, but I do think we have the best riding in the world. I never lose motivation to train. I get to spend every day outside for my job. What's not motivating about that? But I guess it's just my escape from the shitty bits of reality. I'm still on that escape. <laughs> I feel super chilled about next season. Being an elite is nice because I have 20 years to work towards my goals. Hopefully they'll come sooner than that. There is a reason why you enter a sport and 99% of the time it's not because you want to win the Olympics. It's because you love the sport. It's not the results and it's really easy to forget that. It's really important to, to remember why you're there in the first place. <laughs> Have a dab, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Train for cars. How did we get on it? Well, this is a trial. Ewan's gonna be my mechanic, decided. Whether he likes it or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really small and most brands... Are you? Had you noticed? <laughs> <laughs> 16 inch. I'd be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> Colin! Colin! Freedom! Oh, you can't actually shoot it out. Oh. Let's just put that. <laughs> <laughs> the most random assortment of food. What have we got? What have we got? Got some beans, protein. Max has got 10 kilograms of chocolate. Mate, he's got a trombone. That's not a trombone. It's a trombone. No, a trombone. Yeah, maybe it's not a trombone. What is it? It's a tuba, is it not? You're a tuba. You're a tuba. You're a fucking tuba. It's a bit crumpled, right? Uh, what happened? It's like <laughs> my good luck thing. <laughs> you crumble it up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm going to switch the e bike. I thought so. I think it's my niche. <laughs> privateer, privateer lifestyles. <laughs> you know, it's getting tricky. What's just happened? Act just changing a wheel. Ah, just for the fuck of it, like. Yeah, it's half three in the morning. This is like a 50 minute walk to the airport in the pouring rain. And is this a normal recovery strategy, strategy island? Yeah, it works quite well. Yeah. I do it after every race. Are they really gonna be in the film? Are they really gonna be in the film? He's quite finished with this tree. Me and this tree, uh, I've got things to do. So if you would like to leave, If you would like to leave. Ah. <laughs>